Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her des desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice will for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. 
Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself for more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy 
in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. In 2017, there was an event that took our breaths away and made us stop look up and pay attention. The eclipse, remember that? And we found ourselves smack dab in the middle of the path of totality. Three years ago this weekend, the world was buzzing with the word corona. Not the novel virus, of course, but that other one, the dazzling crown of the sun. 
that filled our news feeds, made us stop whatever we were doing and pay attention. For just a few moments, we set aside our partisan politics, our immediate anxieties and differences of opinion. We gathered in fields and parking lots. We sprawled out on picnic blankets and lawn chairs, put on those silly looking solar sunglasses and looked up. For just a few minutes, all of us, saints and sinners alike, were equally insignificant little organisms on the earth, looking up in awe at the beauty of what God created. Seems like forever ago, doesn't it? Three years ago, people came from all over to be with us in this path of totality, that geographical swath of land where our perspective was perfectly aligned to witness the majesty of the eclipse. We were fortunate to be able to witness the beauty of the sun's corona in spite of the dark orb of the moon casting a long shadow across our landscape. And it was beautiful, wasn't it? Well, nearly 3,000 years ago, a long shadow had been cast across the spiritual landscape of Isaiah's people. Jerusalem had been conquered by Babylonia and the Hebrew people were exiled. And finally, a return to some sibilance of normal seemed like a possibility, and they were seeking guidance for how that would happen. And even as they longed for what was familiar, their leaders wisely looked for ways to move forward that wouldn't be a complete return to the way things used to be, as they had grown and changed during their time away. So the Old Testament writer encourages his readers to look back and remind themselves who they are before forging their way ahead. And he does so by reminding them in vivid imagery of the fruitfulness of God's creation. The Lord will make Zion's wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. God's good news of comfort to the Hebrew people is that the barren waste places will be infused with verdant new life. And so it will one day be with us. Our inner barren places, our, our hearts hurting with a sense of exile, may also rest in the promise that God will transform our periods of disruption and chaos and God is present and guiding us past our longings for restoration to what has been known and is familiar, to a place that's more, that's abundant, that is greater than we could possibly anticipate. And we can trust that this is so because that is our story. Again and again throughout the history of God's people, Times of heartache and transition culminate in a homecoming that is beyond what could be hoped for. So let me turn now to our gospel. The clock is ticking and the journey to Jerusalem is about to begin in earnest. Jesus has just fed thousands of people with a few loaves and fish, and the Pharisees and Sadducees have asked Jesus to show them a sign from heaven. Well, apparently feeding a gazillion people with no food is, doesn't count. But Jesus basically says, you're only going to see what you're looking for. And if you haven't gotten it by now, you never will. And he walks away. After walking for a bit and arriving in Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asks the, questions, asks the disciples a question. Who do people say that I am? Well, here we witness an eclipse of another sort that is happening. Allow me to provide a bit more context. The city where this takes place was given by Emperor Caesar Augustus to King Herod. It and the surrounding area were built up, and a luxurious temple was built and dedicated to the Greek god Pan, a fertility god of the wild, of shepherds and of sheep, and he's associated with sexuality. When Herod died, King Philip took over and renamed the city Caesarea Philippi. And this is where our gospel lesson takes place, a city known for its wealth and power and politics as usual. In the shadow of power politics, the question, who do people say that I am, is a relatively safe question, a question marked by curiosity, perhaps. And it allows room for the disciples to respond with hearsay, 
without having to make a firm stand of their own or declare their own beliefs or take any significant risks. A few rumors are tossed about, perhaps of the disciples waiting to see what Jesus' reaction might be to the, each of the names that are offered. But then Jesus pointedly calls the question, but who do you say that I am? And Peter, with revolutionary zeal, boldly proclaims, well, you're the Messiah, of course, the Son of the living God. And what had been hidden or perhaps discussed in small circles in ways that seem more rumor-like than truth-telling is now openly declared and proclaimed with wholehearted devotion. In that moment, the Word made flesh, the incarnated totality of God, stretches across the spiritual landscape of those who have known Jesus, have heard his teachings, and witnessed his healing and grace. So eclipses come in many forms, right? Be it, be it a COVID furlough, or the birth of a child, the death of a loved one, or a kind note received in the mail, our attention can be arrested in ways that help us see God's glory more clearly. And these eclipses help us see how tiny we are in relation to the vast expanse of God's creation. And they allow us the opportunity to stop and notice that we aren't the center of the universe. Eclipses provide rare moments of clarity when we can see things that we usually can't. All the commotion, the bickering, the petty worries over which we have no control anyway, all of that stops and our attention is focused beyond ourselves. And we get to bear witness to God's totality in our lives and Jesus as our Lord. Isaiah has a word of hope for us. As we wait out this virus, we long for what is familiar. Let us also look forward with imagination like the exiled Hebrew people did, trusting God's consistency to bring us through the storm to safety and carry us past the tensions and strife and power plays to a kingdom of justice and mercy and who will comfort and heal all of our waste places. May our witness of this COVID eclipse be not one of darkness or fear, but one of transformative growth within our community and within our own hearts. C.S. Lewis is credited with saying, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. May we remain rooted in God's narrative, a narrative of love and compassion and understanding. May we draw strength from the saints who have gone before us and who have faithfully run the race that they had before them, that they ran with endurance. May we stop and pay attention and behold the brilliance of the sun, active in our lives and in our imaginations, calling our attention to that which is bigger than we are so that we may reflect the image of God's light and love in the world around us. May our anxieties, tensions, and differences of opinion be eclipsed by our bold proclamation that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Let us stand together and affirm what we believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, offering the names associated with our thanksgivings and intercessions, either silently or aloud, and then joining the congregational refrain by responding, hear our prayer. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We give great thanks for those in our community who serve on medical teams, including Anne, Christy, Lisa, Pete, Shannon, Allison, David, Ron, Lucy, Victoria, Deidre, Kathy, Milena, Megan, Lynn. And we give thanks for the marriage of John and Brittany Rupp, son and daughter-in-law of Betty Rupp. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for healing for Faye, Jeannie, Carol, Don, Catherine, Tina, Bobby, Sarah, Ruthie, Marty, Sandy, Denise, Nancy, Dave, Anne, Joy, John, Dick, Faye, Carol, Nancy, and Kay. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray for the repose of the soul of Mac Hunt, known to Bill and Loretta Hartzell. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Lord our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
peace of God which surpasses all our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we want to give special thanks for St. Peter's Audit Committee. This is one of those important responsibilities in a church, in any organization really, and often one that takes place behind the scenes. I'm proud that St. Peter's, even before I arrived here in 2010, publishes and posts up on the wall each month a detailed financial statement for anyone to review. In addition, once a year, our audit committee comes together in order to audit the financial statements and financial transactions at St. Peter's. In addition to the basic uh, auditing of our financial records, the Episcopal Diocese of Upper South Carolina has a questionnaire with 50 or, or more questions that uh, prompt each congregation to evaluate where they stand with things such as insurance or other protections uh, for the congregation's assets and mission and ministry. So today we thank our audit committee for preparing the 2019 audit which we have just sent in to the Episcopal Diocese Office. <laughs>